And I've seen people ask us this question before, actually. How would you and I, T, it's good fix, to be here, fix Arkham Knight? By the way, uh, it's ironic that you go by T because today we're going to be spilling some tea go about on. Batman Arkham Knight. That's a great wordplay. Thank you very much. And how we would actually fix the story of the game. This is not uh, something that we're doing in terms of like gameplay mechanics. So we're not talking about how we'd fix the gameplay mechanics. Right, right, right. We're talking purely about this storyline that was developed by Rocksteady following up Batman Arkham City and also, importantly, Batman Arkham Origins. Because right. that actually came out right before this, even though it was technically the first, but not. So here we are. Right. Here we are. Indeed. Yeah. So there's a lot of there's quite a few things that we've and this is simply, like you said, focusing on the central plot and side missions and stuff that we just thought that could have been better. And that should that would easily be fixed. Or I guess maybe more complex fixes as well. So For sure. the first thing that we'd like to start out with is really the title character, Arkham Knight. Oof. Uh, there's a lot to go in with this. We guy. both like Arkham Knight, right? By the way, sure. huge, huge spoilers on who his identity is. I feel like it's been out there for years, but someone would complain if I don't say that. Sure. Uh, Arkham Knight is Jason Todd. Yes. So first off, we change that because Arkham Knight ends up both the game and the character ends up being like under the Red Hood light. Yeah, yes he does. And the thing is too is that with this, the kind of the background for it is that Rocksteady said it wasn't going to be a Jason Todd. Yeah, they did. So they said we he's were... an entirely original character. Right, and he's, and he's not. No, so... and people have said like, well actually the Arkham Knight is an original character, but the person under the mask is not. But it's like, that's like politician It's just talk. semantics. It's, now, yeah. it's like how a lawyer would speak to like get out of something. Yeah. Where it's like, oh, well I understand that we have to pay you every month, but we don't have to give you money every right. month. You know what I mean? They'll, right. like, they'll find like some little loophole right. uh, in law. And that's sort of what Rocksteady did to get away with this. I don't think anyone like saw it after hearing that and was like, oh, I'm so glad they lied. Right. Because no. that's really what this was, was wordplay that if it's not a lie, it's borderline. Yes, and I don't think that Jason Todd shouldn't have been in the game. I think that he, like, there was a place for him somewhere in this yeah. universe. And I think that the story and, like, even the flashbacks were really good parts of the game, actually. I liked the, the flashback of, yep. like, Joker and the crowbar and then, like, his death and everything I would have like actually that. added more of those. Yes, yeah. And had him be a red herring. So in, yeah. in media, you know what a red herring is. There's going to be some people who probably don't. Right. But a red her herring, either in media or in a logical argument, is like something you throw out there to like catch someone off base that doesn't have anything to do with what you're talking about. So like really, you could have Jason Todd be coming up in these flashbacks that are caused by the fear toxin and the elements of Joker's personality left inside Batman that are like building up and causing internal stress over time that's making him wonder if Arkham Knight could be Jason come back. But it would almost hit harder if it wasn't. Like there's this tiny bit of hope for Jason at the end of this game because he's still alive. He helps Batman a little bit. Yep. Uh, and he comes back as Red Hood after the story because that DLC takes place later. Uh, but with this, there would be no hope. Jason would be revealed to just be dead. And that's it, and it's final. He's and, gone. And I think it would have been a really cool point for Joker as he was slowly taking over Batman, yeah. for him to use those flashbacks and kind of plant that fear in his mind, I guess. It's, yeah. like, it's like Joker basically using the death of Jason and kind of planting that idea of, oh, maybe it is him, maybe it is hope, and then letting him down even further. Yeah. Like, it's just Joker being Joker and, like, taking down Batman beyond the grave, obviously, like he was doing regardless, but using Jason in a way that isn't the Arkham Knight, because for me, and like you said, it, I think it would have been better if it was someone, just nobody. Yeah, it was a just nobody. Like, or maybe like an idea maybe that would have been cool is like someone that he beat up from the asylum that like was a nobody that came in, that had a little bit of history, nothing crazy. You could but, have built up a history like that just ran, like in a reveal. So yeah. um, an example of this actually is, I would argue one of the best villains in the Marvel Cinematic Universe for movies is Baron Zemo. Mm -hmm. There's going to be some people who are like, no, uh, but it's like, he's not if you don't take the subtlety of him. Like, if you're looking at pure power, no, not him at all. But the whole thing with Baron Zemo in Civil War was that he's just some dude they screwed over. That's it. They didn't even know he existed. Like, he was a nobody, just a guy. A whose, civilian. Whose yeah. family got killed. Basically, during Sokovia with the fallout with the Avengers, um, with Age of Ultron, it also ended up obviously giving Age of Ultron some stakes, like, after the fact. 
But the point we're making with this is that he worked because he was a nobody who knew that he technically couldn't take on the Avengers. So he sort of planted the seeds of like distrust and like pain among them, you know? And so if you sort of did that same thing, like maybe less in terms of like turning the Bat family against each other, but like using the situation, using Scarecrow, using Batman's age, you know, he's aging at this point, using like uh, the turmoil in Gotham, the martial law declared obviously by the militia that comes in and using all these things to slowly erode Batman over time as a nobody and then come in, that would be awesome versus just, oh, it's Jason. 100% and have it and like you said have it build up in a way where it doesn't it doesn't have to be the bat family involved in everything right it could have been an entirely original character with a background like that um, that I think would have worked really well with that story and then it gives other characters like he could have been not as much of a focal point and gives Scarecrow more of the top villain spot in that game which I yeah. think was another problem that yeah, we're going to we, talk about we do have that on here too I think with Scarecrow like, yeah. we really think that Scarecrow gets overshadowed at a certain point Yes, you and I would both leave Joker hallucinations in the game loved it I almost feel like you'd need to extend the game a little bit to work in everything in here I, Arkham Knight in some ways is the Spider-Man 3 of the Arkham franchise. A little it's bit, got yeah. everything jammed in it to try and finish the series in what maybe should have been a two-game storyline and ends up being one game. Uh, and because of that, it loses focus over and over again and just kind of goes back and forth on what it's looking at. Well, that's the thing is with Scarecrow, it would have been nice to have more time with him because yeah. we, we really didn't... We got some awesome scenes with him is the thing. The one yep. where you're on the blimp that's about to explode and, and crash down to, to Earth. And that one the stag is, airship. Yeah, the stag airship. And he's he's like giving him the hallucinations and you see Joker and you and you fight a million jokers. Those and scenes like that are when uh, he's up on there with Gordon and Gordon shoots Batman and stuff like that. Or in Ace Chemicals, even the first one. Yeah, or Ace Chemicals. Or even at the very end oh. with the reveal. Or at the very intro with like the scarecrow fear toxin, like causing all the people to change. Exa so there's a ton of great moments in there. I think he absolutely had the ability to be the main villain of the entire game yeah. and just roll with that. And you could have used, um, I think we should get into the part I'm going to say more in a future video about fixing the gameplay mechanics, but I was thinking another way to incorporate Scarecrow would have been to have his fear gas affect more people. Yeah. Because they effectively abandoned Gotham completely, there's not a lot of stakes to like what Scarecrow is doing other than it damaging Batman's reputation and like needing to be replaced, obviously. But in terms of Scarecrow, if you had had places where like, what if a bunch of civilians got gassed and you had to take them down a different way? Like that's a way to play him into or the cops. story. Cops yeah. maybe too. Yeah, yeah. To Especially following a game, Arkham Origins, where like cops were one of the main enemies actually. Yeah. The SWAT mm -hmm. units and stuff. Like there were seeds to do these things with Scarecrow. Oh, 100%. And they just kind of fall through. And I do want to point out too that I don't know where this is on our list because this is a bit less of a list and more just bullet points. Right. With Scarecrow, you mentioned to me and I mentioned to you as well, we were talking about the, uh, the ending confrontation with Scarecrow and there is some, how would you say it? Like almost an undermining of Batman's character and the idea that like, Oh, he took off his utility belt, so he can't fight Scarecrow. Mm -hmm. It didn't really make much sense to me as a player. Uh, because, yes, that's his weaponry, but, like, they drew heavily on, like, Batman the Animated Series for, like, the core of, like, this universe. Uh, Dini wasn't involved really in this one, but the ideas obviously were there from a lot of the core BTAS episodes. So I would assume that he was still, like, a master escape artist. You know, yes. I would assume he still had those abilities. Uh, so to say that he's very just like, competent in hand-to-hand -hand combat as well, yeah. he was the entire series Yeah, so to just say like he's tied up and that's it. It's over. That was kind of weird I do what you mean 100% and I, I think that was kind of off and then another thing that we wanted to talk about too was the whole uh, Tim Drake and Oracle thing. That's one thing that you mentioned that you maybe yeah. want to talk about too. Tim Drake and Oracle is weird It's like the least of the bad problems to me. Uh, it really bothered a lot of other people more than me, but those two don't really work super well as a couple, I don't think. No. They've really never been much of a thing. There also has pretty consistently been an age difference between them because of, you know, like, BTAS and, like, some other interpretations. I was gonna say, like, he's substantially younger, isn't yeah, he? Like, by generally, yeah. yeah. 
So it's yeah. kind of interesting how it worked out in this one. I mean, there are some timeline differences, obviously, in Arkham. Right. Right. But it's it's kind of weird to pair those two together. In some ways, this would be like pairing together Batman and Harley as like a relationship. Yeah. It's not that you never could do that in any universe, but it's so foreign and weird compared to what people expect of like Batman with Catwoman or Batman with Talia. Uh, like comparatively, you'd see like Barbara with Dick generally. Right. Like they, those two are generally together. Um, or her with someone else in the comics that's like, you know, obviously not Dick Grayson because Dick Grayson's also been with like Starfire. Yes. So yeah. y- you have these established patterns and they almost subjugate, like, they, or subvert, that's the word. They almost mm-hmm. subvert expectations for no reason, you know? Yeah. Like, it's like we're being different to be different, but there wasn't a point to it. Did you feel like there was any point to the, the Tim and Barbara romance? Not really, no. no. Uh, they didn't really use it a lot either, is the thing. Like, there was uh, a little bit of concern, I guess, and like, um, but it was more so you saw it when Batman didn't tell uh, Jim what was going on. That's when that relationship, like when Barbara was kidnapped, yeah. and he kind of like held it from her and the whole thing of like all of that. Um, that was more seen with Jim. It would have been cool to see more of a reaction, I guess, and more of like an intense thing with uh with tim drake I guess. the only reaction you see is you lock him in the in the vault that's it yeah er, in, not in the vault in the containment unit and he's like oh you're a bastard i don't like you right why'd you why did you tell me i'm mad right that's <laughs> I mean, pretty he throws, much it. he throws a fit for no joke 10 seconds yep maybe 15 and then sits down yeah that's it and then that's it yeah so the i guess we're getting into side missions a little bit here and there yeah. are some other things and those are still to. narrative so they that's are because yeah. this this was meant to tie a bow on the arkham series exactly and a lot of side missions that we had that were amazing leading up and the main one and i think and we've talked about this in worst side missions uh as well in one of our other top five lists this one was the worst and that's hush and hush's his story uh, was so poorly finished from the lead up in Arkham oh, City yeah. that I, I would have changed this in so many ways. I think that there should have been an actual, uh, like, maybe even, not necessarily paired along, but maybe along with the main story. Yeah. This should have been a big thing. He was Bruce Wayne. That could have been something that, like, he was, like, plotting something for months and, like, could have been getting away with this for it's months. A year. Yeah, so like, why why was this something that was thrown in for, I mean, you could probably finish this mission in 10, 15 minutes. That's it, Hush's story is done. Yeah, yeah. 100%. And I think, honestly, you could have mostly replaced Riddler with him. You could have like halved the Riddler challenges and brought in like Hush challenges of some kind. They could have been their separate thing, maybe like the same amount as the Riddler. So like you could have left the same amount of puzzles in this game, but like have someone be half be Riddler and then half be Hush and his so- story that like develops over time as you hit these checkpoints yeah, and in the puzzles. And maybe you're seeing what Hush is doing to like Wayne Enterprises or doing to like maybe Wayne employees or yeah. something like that, where it's just like he's leaving a trail, not necessarily like a Professor Pig like where it's like you're finding bodies everywhere in like a gruesome way, but maybe though, maybe you're maybe he's like leaving a trail saying I got this guy, I got this guy, and eventually like working his way up until he gets to Lucius. And that's oh, where yeah. the final build up is maybe, and there's more to it than just like, all right, now you're already here. And if you don't want it to be there, another place where you could have had this confrontation is you could have had it at Wayne Manor, actually. That would have been insane. With Alfred. Yeah. Like imagine like Alfred is like, oh, Mr. Wayne, you're back. And you know, like, or Bruce, you're back. And he just like decks him or something. You know what I mean? Like you have like a cutscene building up to that. Uh, sort of like you had for Lucius. So it's like, yeah. so like you have a point in the game where it's like, retur- uh, not return to, um, return to the manor, but they would tell Batman like, oh, you need to go back to the manor. Yeah. But it cuts ahead. So like you get back and you're playing as Bruce. Yes. And it's the yeah. same type of thing where like you go up to Alfred, you just annihilate him. And then you go down into the Batcave or something like that. Like yeah. You find it. You could have done something really cool like that to build dramatic tension with that element of the story. Uh, but it just all goes out the window because it really just comes down to I want money. That's it. He that was it. That's he all he wanted. He doesn't have like a very good motivation and frankly like his motivation is almost more shallow than someone like Two-Face. Like it's really just I want your money because you're you. And I don't like you. Yeah, and I it. don't like you. That's it. That's like, his story. And they don't even fully explain why he doesn't like him because like in some ways it's like okay but he was your best friend as a kid. Yeah, and what did he do? Yeah, you know, like his dad saved, uh, you know, why do I always forget Hush's name? 
uh, Elliot? Thomas Elliot, Elliot, yes, yeah. Thomas Elliot. He saved like his uh, mother, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think so. You're right. yeah. It was either his mother or his father, and I, I get details like that mixed up once in a while, but like basically, and prevented him from getting his inheritance yes. because he wanted yeah. to get it from his parents dying. Um, so he hates Bruce for that. It's just weird. It's not fully fleshed out, and it could have been over time. It really could have been. There was a lot of potential with that story. Uh, it, moving on to uh, Azrael. That yeah. was another one, too, that I feel like uh, you talked about specifically. This is kind of two for one, I guess, with the Nightfall Protocol and yep. kind of seeing that and uh, maybe hinting at, or at least definitely showing maybe, that Azrael was taking over Gotham. Yeah, you could have shown the Azrael uh, bat suit or a variant of it mm -hmm. at the end instead of the Nightmare Batman. That would have been interesting because he is sort of like built up to take over. But he's not John Paul Valley from the comics from Nightfall. So he's not the insane Azrael. This is Michael Wayne. Like, he's a lot more tempered than John Paul Valley. Yes. So, like, yeah. he could have actually made a suitable replacement for Batman. Mm -hmm. And it would have worked. Um, and there's, like, a lot of ways you could have played that off. And it wouldn't have felt forced. It, I don't think it wouldn't have felt like it wasn't built up to. Because they did mention these prophecy things in City. And then you would have also, like, worked with him in Night Over Time. Yeah, and I think if they would have had... If they would have built it up a little bit more, because really you just fight as him, and it's just him just watching. Um, if there was actual like training and, and like, stealth lessons, missions like, and stealth missions and stuff that you're actually learning, to where it's like, okay, he's actually getting built up, because it was basically Batman was just watching him fight and then saying, okay, that was pretty good. I'll see you at the next one. Was pretty much it. So yeah. if you if if you actually built that mission up to where it was like Batman was training and you're like or training Azrael and you're like actually seeing him develop new skills and like you're getting like a gadget or something and like Batman's like giving him things gradually like, all right now you'll want to do this you know what I mean so like actually training him uh, I think that would have been a way cooler end and then when you get to Nightfall Protocol you're actually seeing Azrael uh, take that mantle and actually take it over um, instead of just kind of like a quick three missions and then you could either uh, like be like, all right, we're cool now, or you bring Azrael to jail. Like that was yeah. one of the other options too. And so. obviously that would cause a different ending, right? And that's not that hard to do because the ending's just a cutscene. That's it. Yeah, they could have done a different cutscene. Mm -hmm. Plenty of games do. I mean, there's JRPG games that have like 20 endings. Right. It would not be that hard. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, not at all. Uh, the next one that we wanted to touch on quick was Deathstroke. Yeah, uh, Deathstroke, Deathstroke is a big mishandle. Mm -hmm. Like he comes down to a tank battle. He's built up with dialogue over the course of the game. He's a huge blue ball, like, in terms of, like, Big what time. you get. Yeah. It's just terrible. And you even have, like, sort of a the same boss fight with him as you had earlier in the game. With Arkham Knight. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 100%. There's nothing cool about that. There was nothing in This the really should have come down to a hand-to-hand -hand confrontation on a roof. Yeah. Like, or roof. I don't know. What do you want me to say? Someone's getting criticized. <laughs> yeah, you said Oh, roof, rough, roof, riff, <laughs> raff, riff, raff, riff, raff, rim, rim, ram, rim, job. Rim, rim. Go on. <laughs> No, I'm good. All right, all right, fine. So I don't know. You know, you could have done a lot of stuff with that uh, that would have actually worked a lot better than just, oh, hey, time to fight your car. And that's it. And you just yeah. stay in your car. And that was the whole thing, I guess, with, like, the Batmobile and stuff, too, that is more gameplay than anything. Yeah, which but we'll definitely get to in a future video. We will, for sure. Th because otherwise, this would be, like, 45 minutes. We're, we're already going to have to cut this down to 20, probably. We will, yeah, for sure. But, yeah, it, it, with Deathstroke, like you said, like, we had a great fight in Origins. It would have been awesome to have some... Uh, like a finale with that that was great maybe even some like uh, like small quick time events as you like go across rooftops or something like move it around the city they're pretty much equals when it comes to hand-to-hand -to -hand. that should have been shown and and really fleshed out along like a giant battle that would just be like this epic finale I guess between yeah. them. so that was disappointing. Uh, you wanted to talk about our last item actually is oh the, thank God the bat family. Yeah. <laughs> we've touched it all the bat family um, and just what happened Oh, there. boy, that's a letdown, too. Yeah. So, like, they kind of push the Bat Family a little bit in this game in terms of, like, oh, everybody's here, but, like, nobody matters. Like, no. Dick Grayson is just relegated to some side missions with Penguin. That's it. And he kind of gets dicked over. Go huh? on. Okay. Uh, because, like, the thing is, like, he goes up against, like, Penguin and he just gets destroyed. Yes. You know? So, like, it just doesn't really even make Dick Grayson look that good. Uh, he's here as like a side mission buddy. That's it. That's it. Robin yeah. shows up in a few scenes in the campaign. Then he gets locked up in a little jail cell like a moron, uh, which he should have seen coming and did not at all. Yeah. So that was silly. He did look like an idiot. Yeah. yeah he looked like a huge moron. Yeah. Uh, you had Oracle, who was. I don't want to sound like the. Picking my words carefully here. I don't want to sound like the crit critic. Let's just say that. Who says, "Oh, this woman was relegated to a block device," but. 
Oracle was a plot device. <laughs> yeah. There wasn't really much to her here. Like, she was used for emotional baggage, really. Like, it was just, oh, I think Oracle's dead. And then, like, oh, Oracle's alive. I have to save her. So she's like the MacGuffin, you know? Right. And then it's like, oh, Oracle made Tim upset. Oh, I need to find Oracle following this trail. There's never anything she contributes to this story in any meaningful way other than that. And she's even emotional baggage in terms of the flashback with the killing joke. And it's not that you can't have any of that, but it was all that. Like, all these characters. And Alfred. Where the hell is Alfred? I was getting, that, we that was hear my him. thing. Where is Alfred? We hear him. We don't really see him. You see him at the end of Nightfall Protocol when he yeah. opens the door. That's really it, though. You don't see him a lot, and especially going from Origins, where you get the most Alfred, and then you go to Night where you never see him. It was definitely disappointing. That was my most disappointing one, to be honest with yeah. you. Um, but yeah, Robin was mildly disappointing. The The gameplay themselves, like going around and doing a stealth mission or a combat mission with the two, was fun. I thought they did a pretty good job with that. But like you said, the depth of the characters just wasn't really there. Yeah. So, so there's a lot there we would have fixed, I think. It, we probably could have gone on for an hour 15 minutes, but we definitely want to keep it shorter. Mm -hmm. So let us know what you think in the comments down below. Be sure to leave a like if you enjoyed this. Subscribe for more content and check out the Discord, the Patreon, everything in between the Instagram, the Twitter. We love having you over there and we'll see you in the next one. Have a great day and stay awesome.